the the worst possible thing that I ever that I imagine could happen to me coming back from a holiday. Lorraine Dempsey is with us on the show today from Wicklow because Lorraine, you brought home a very unexpected visitor from your trip to Kenya. I know, Andrew. Do you ever see those horror movies in the 1980s? I can't. You know, when you were a child, giant ants and scorpions and jaws even. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just not the kind of thing you expect to see on a Saturday morning in your 90s. What happened, Lorraine? Um, so, basically, I I picked up a basket of washing that was right by my bed uh, on Saturday morning. And under the basket of washing, it was on one of those little kind of sheepskin rugs. Um, there was this peculiar looking uh, insect that looked up at me and I for a couple of seconds my brain melted and then I just kind of thought to myself yeah you, you, you're you just back from Kenya it is a scorpion you are seeing what's down in front of did you, you. Know, did you and know what it was? I, well, you recognised like, it? Like? I recognised it but you know in that moment you're kind of not processing what no. you're seeing look this is Wicklow oh, you know and then I uh, it literally took three seconds before it sunk in. That I was like, yes, you're back from Kenya. I, I arrived back 12 days before. And I was like, of course, this is a scorpion. Um, and then it scuttled away under the couch next to my bed. <laughs> and then I scuttled backwards to the door of the room um, uh, and just got uh, hysterically giddy, I think would be... Uh, well, I would have it. absolutely legged it out of the house, gone out of Wicklow. <laughs> I wouldn't have been anywhere I near... Think- <laughs> the house the Lorraine. problem with that is I needed to make sure that this wasn't going to come out of my bedroom door. So I spent an hour and a half pacing around by my bedroom door, um, just watching the kind of open floor around my bed just to make sure that it didn't kind of come out from there or if it did that I'd see it. Uh, and then I just spent an hour and a half pacing on my phone, ringing various people trying to figure out. Yeah. Uh, I did the most ridiculous Google search of like, what to do when you find a scorpion in <laughs> Ireland? And of course, nothing came up um, except a scorpion in the UK that a couple had found in their kitchen last October. Similar thing, they'd been to Kenya as well, right. um, but it just really wasn't helpful. So I rang a good friend of mine who um, is a, was a botanist and is a, a researcher for Keeling's fruit, and I thought, this guy knows, if he doesn't know, he knows people who do. <laughs> so um, that was the beginning of the phone calls, which then led me to the National Reptile Zoo in Kilkenny, uh, to James Hennessy, the director down there, and his team. And, um, you know, they, they basically said they, they wouldn't be able to come up and actually search in a private house, but they gave me instructions on how to search safely and that they then kind of help with the identification and take the scorpion off my hands. So you, uh, you, you had so, to locate him, Lorraine, again? Yeah, so it's really like, you know, phone a friend moment. I, I was having these mad conversations with friends of mine who I knew kind of lived locally, might be available in the afternoon and would be sensible enough to do something safely and have the gear to do it. So I, I rallied five friends who came down in the afternoon. In the meantime, I wasn't going to stay there standing in my light dress. So no. I actually sealed the bottom of my bedroom door and closed it. I, I got my youngest out of the house because from the descriptions that I'd given, there was a concern that this was a thing called a Kenyan death stalker that is in the area of Kenya where I, I was staying in. And this would be fatal to children and older people and people infirm. And I have a daughter with disabilities in the house as well. So once I secured, you know, kids, animals and everything to make sure that um, the space was safe uh, and that there was no chance of this thing getting out of the room, even though it had been quite happy in there on my underfloor heating for 12 nights. Um, I, I, yeah, I I waited for the crew to arrive and then we we put a plan together. He's in Kilkenny, is he? He's in Kilkenny, unfortunate name, because I did call him Kilkenny for the morning because I just felt I couldn't process things scorpion all the time. So I gave it a name just to calm myself down. And yeah, so Kenny is in Kilkenny, which is an unfortunate turn of phrase. (laughs) But um, yeah, I I drove, we we managed to find him after an hour and a half. We took everything out of my bedroom bit by bit. We, We had these two giant plastic containers that we shook closed into carefully. Every item came out of my room. Uh, then the mattress had to be taken out of the room. And again, we had to check that. Oh, and God. finally, we re- we kind of came to the conclusion it has to be under the bed. And yeah. I have like a super king bed and it's a storage bed so you can't even see underneath. So we basically had to move this bed foot by foot away from the wall and it was heavy. And then kind of do a sweep check and move another foot. Yeah, and eventually awesome. we found Kenny in under it, hunkered All's down. All's well that ends, well, all the rain. Yeah, yeah you were so very lucky, spotted it under the basket that time. 
I was, yeah, because yeah. look, I mean, my thoughts were, what, what we were told was like, you, you have no option, you have to find this. So, you know, we planned for the evening, we're, you know, we were going to keep going, get takeaway. I mean, look, <laughs> the room, thankfully, wasn't carpeted, but, you know, I was like, I want my room back. And yeah. now that I know it's been Good. in there, there's no way I'm well, sleeping. Well, Kenny, if, any, if anybody wants to, is supposed to find out more about Kenny, he's currently at the National Reptile Zoo in uh, Kilkenny. Lorraine Dempsey, thanks a million for joining us in the programme today. I want to hear about the most bizarre things you ever brought home from holidays those weird things that you find in your case in your bag